Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. I have a, wow, just an amazing upload to share with you. Father and daughter interview. They share the just absolute crazy experiences they have going on in their uh, neighborhood of rural Virginia. And you guys are going to absolutely love this. Before we get into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogland Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They all were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. Finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon, and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go, and folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I've taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this very interesting subscriber interview, shall we? All right, everybody. Tonight, I have a subscriber and friend, now a new friend, that I am super excited to introduce you all to. I was on TikTok the other day and I was checking some stuff out and I heard my name mentioned. So I watched this person's video rather quickly and um, she had some very interesting stuff to say about an area that I am fascinated with, southwestern Virginia. Her name's Brooke. Brooke, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for coming on today and taking some time out of your evening to share with us. Yes, it's absolutely a pleasure. I'm looking forward to this. So I heard, uh, you know, I was just scrolling through and you were actually talking about your dad and you were talking about Dogman and you had mentioned my channel and a couple of other ones. And I reached out to you and I was like, she's got some amazing information to share you know um old old world kind of virginia appalachia experiences and stories of the woods and um your whole family it seems you know i i you've not shared all of your experiences or any with me of except what i've heard on tiktok so um i guess you're I, I don't know where you want to start. I, you want to start with where it all started for your family or how yeah. you were introduced to Dog Man? Yeah, that would probably be the best, oh. starting with my little brother. All right. Now, everybody, I'm going to link Brooke's TikTok in the description below so you guys can check her out and support her. She's a wonderful person. I've just chatted with her for about an hour. Please go over and give her some support. Let's start with your brother's experience. So... Um, I think I should say, like, to this day, my brother does not go to the bathroom alone. Um, we have, like, a rickety old bathroom window that we didn't have a curtain for. We never felt the need to have a curtain for it because, I mean, I mean, you got to think, there's only, like, three, four neighbors within walking distance, whole families type deal. So, like it's not very common to have somebody like walk up on your property, right. you know? Um, so we never really felt the need to cover our windows. It was not really something that we thought of. And, um, I don't know verbatim truly what happened. I do know that my brother, um, it was, he was going to take a bath alone. Usually like, he would either like take a bath with his brother or something like that. Just get it out of the way, get it done. 
Um, but this night in particular, he was alone in the bathroom. And they had, like, I think, like, a whole little bath set up, toys, everything, you know, everything that a five-year-old would need to right. have, like, a pretty successful bath time before <laughs> bed. Um, and from what I remember it being told to me was my brother just happened to look up in the window. And he caught the snout of something that he described as extremely black. He said the ears looked like bad ears and Mm -hmm. that he could see like a little bit of gray on the muzzle. He said it looked like a dog. Like it just, it looked like a dog and it had really, really wide like ears and he was solid black. And naturally this kid loses his freaking mind. Right. (laughs) And he jumps out of the bathtub so fast that he trips getting out and he's still crawling away from the bathroom. He's trying to get away so fast. And this kid was probably inconsolable for two, three hours. Wow. He couldn't even get out really what he had seen. But like my family had knew that he had to have seen something, you know, like children don't freak out quite that badly. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how high was that window from the ground? Um, so I'm sitting at about five one. So it was about to my neck. Okay. So I'd say about like anywhere from like four like four foot nine to about five foot okay. off the ground. So not that not that far, but enough, you know. Enough that like a dog shouldn't be able to look in the window without it being a very big dog. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, we don't have that. I mean, we have dogs in the area, of course, but, like, none that come on our property. I mean, I I think, no, no, I'm telling you wrong. Um, I thought we had a pit bull at that point, but we got a pit bull not too long after that. Um, So, like, we had a dog across the road that would come over on occasion, but not before our dogs started. Like, not before we got our dogs. Okay. So, like... There were dogs that would wander onto our property, but nothing that was as black as my brother described and nothing that was as big as he described. Because not only did he, like, describe the, like, he kept mentioning, like, they look like bat ears. So, like, not only did he mention the bat ears, but, like, this thing was white, Mm. you know? Like, he said it was probably as white as the window, and it just noticed him looking at him and quickly ducked out of sight, and he was never seen. Like, I think my dad being my dad walked out and tried to look for this thing and he couldn't find anything. And like, he couldn't even find footprints underneath the window. And so like my dad did not believe my brother because obviously he's seen something, but I think my dad was going along the lines of it being a bear, you know, because we have bear, we have mountain bear that come out of the mountains like crazy with a lot of mange. They're really big. They, they're pretty aggressive at some points. So, I think that's just kind of what he thought. As a bear looked in the window, scared my brother. My brother's five. He don't know what he's seeing, you know? Right. Um, And that is about until, I'd say, two weeks, three weeks before my dad's encounter, which blew this all out of the water and changed the entire ball game. Can I um, just, I just want to mention something, guys. Now, where all of this occurred is about an hour from Tazewell, Virginia. It's it's mining country, you know, old mines, um, just a lot of real old woods and old stories and stuff like that. So this is real close to where um, a lot of accounts that I have covered have happened. I think you're, you're roughly an hour and six minutes away from Tazewell probably. Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah. And there was a lead mine there too, yes. which you told me about, which was crazy. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just wanted to kind of fill in the blanks for people to kind of imagine where this is all happening. Um, shoot on to your dad's story. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you are just fine. That was kind of what I was hoping you'd do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my dad is an animal whisperer. I cannot stress that enough to you anyone like he's been referred to online as a disney princess you know like (laughs) he can hold his pet fish and the fish like lets him and like lets him pet him 
and like all this stuff. My dad just has a gift, a wonderful gift with animals. He gets so close to animals so fast. So when my dad tends to befriend the local deer, we don't question it because it's my father. You know, he just kind of does that sometimes. Right. <laughs> Um, and he had this one particular deer that he grew quite fond of because it would be the closest one that would get to him. So, um, to kind of give you like a little basic layout of where it is. So, and say you're looking at two houses on the road that are like directly apart from each other. Um, my coming from the road, my dad's house would be on the right. My grandparents' house would be on the left, but they're, they're connecting, um, they're connecting areas, like connecting lawns. That would be a better way to put it. Um, and we have right behind us, not sure quite how many acres, but we have like a good amount of land and woods um, directly behind us. And it's completely covered in wheat fields and just, um, it gets really, really pretty in the summer, really barren during the winter. It's genuinely such a gorgeous area. Um, and leading up into the field, there was like a really big red tractor, um, kind of like, imagine like an old timey tractor, but not quite like as old as. Like, like an old international crank kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of not quite that old, but old enough that where like you can look at it and be like, oh, that's an old tractor, you know? Right. Um, and we had an old cop car that my dad had bought. Um, and then we had my grandpa's truck and they were, and at the time of the story, um, the cop car was directly in front of the wood pile and the wood pile was probably a hundred, 200 yards from the house. Well, my grandparents house, excuse me. Um, and this deer would always come about to where the tractor would be. And would always eat apples because we had an apple tree like directly beside of the garage. And my dad is a dad <laughs> and he loves the garage. He always goes to the garage and he does whatever he does. He's in there for hours on end, you know. So when he goes down to the garage, he sees the deer and he's talking to it. He's like, oh, you're such a pretty girl, you know, like you're so pretty. What are you doing here? Um and my dad admitted that he had a really weird feeling that, like, he didn't quite know how to describe it. It was just one of those feelings where, like, something was off but not dangerous, mm -hmm. if you've ever been in that type of situation. Yeah. Um, and so he goes down to the garage. He does whatever he's doing for probably about – he said it was either about two or three hours. Like, it was long enough that, like, this deer should have passed on by this point in time, at least, like, went somewhere else in the – in the field, right. that type of deal. And so he comes out of the garage and he's going back to the house and he notices the deer is still there. And he finds this really odd as I feel a lot of people would. And he kind of walks a little bit closer to it and is like, what are you still doing here? You know? And at about this time, this thing, well, he looks at it and he's like, what are you? Because he realizes this thing is a bit too big to be a deer. Okay. And at about that time, this thing gets onto its stomach and climbs in behind the cop car. Now, this freaks my dad out. Like GI and, crawls, kind of? Yeah, kind of like on all fours okay. type deal, but on its on the stomach. Okay. Um, and climbs in behind the cop car. And this immediately freaks my dad out. He pulls out his pistol and... Because he's my dad, he walks towards the cop car, and he gets to about where this thing, you know, climbed in behind it. He looks around. He doesn't see anything. Okay? He starts circling around this cop car, looking for whatever just climbed in behind the cop car, and he can't find it. And at about that time, he got this really, really bad feeling. He was like, turn around, just turn around, turn around, turn around now. And he turned around and there was a wood pile. Had he had taken like one more step backwards, he would have fell backwards. And at that point, you know, you're dealing with something that like he had no idea what he was looking at. So like for all he knew, he, I think 
in his brain, he kind of realized that he wasn't dealing with a bear or anything like that. But, like, for all he knew, the moment that he fell backwards, something would have immediately attacked him. So, like, that's not something that you want to be doing in a scenario like this is falling backwards. Right. Um, and so I think he came to his senses by this point in time and was like, I have to get out of here. Like, this isn't right. Something's not feeling good. Like, I got to go. And so my dad starts backing up towards the house. And he never leaves his eyes. Like, he never lets his eyes leave this area. His gun is pointed the entire time. And he gets to about the porch. And at that point, like, there's there's a million things going on in my dad's brain. But the one thing that he kept um, pushing is if this thing is smart, it's going to wait until he – it's going to wait until it thinks – he is well gone, well in the house, probably freaking out, you know, and it's then it's going to leave. So what my dad does, um, if I'm not mistaken, he opens the door and closes it real quick. And then he waits and he sneaks over from the porch into the picnic table because there was a picnic table that if you go to it at a certain area, you have a blind spot. OK, so you can see everything in front of you, but there's a good chance that they can't see you, okay. you know. Um, and he said that he wasn't there for probably about five, 10 minutes longer, no longer. And, um, this thing took off from right where the cop car was. So like, it's like this thing was playing Mary, like, like a ring around the rosy with my dad because it fully came up and took off over the hill on all fours right where my dad was like not even five minutes prior and then it got to about the top of the hill and i can't remember if my dad said it was a full moon but i'm pretty sure it was a brighter night and at about this time my dad has no idea what he's looking at and it stands on its hind legs and he said that it was blacker than black he's seen the same shape of ears that my brother had seen and he said that like he's seen some colors that like he didn't know if it was like the moon shining off the fur or anything like that but he saw like a few like different shades of color in the fur and it just walked down into the wood line and it was not seen after that wow so it was it was almost nighttime when he started the when he was down at the garage yeah okay yeah, that's like why he is- he'd kind of mistaken the deer as or or the creature as a deer yeah because there was kind of all he was seeing was the figure of it yeah okay wow um he he just kind of on first glance thought it was a deer and you know what jeff after that night that deer never came back Hmm. It, it it was never there i don't think it was there to begin with i'm pretty sure that thing was watching him from the very beginning yeah i don't think that deer was ever there but it never came back so kind of like the theory that I would come up with my dad on occasion, because, you know, we're talking about this a lot. His fascination with dogmen exploded after that. He told me this was like the one entity, the one cryptid that he did not believe in was the dog man. Yeah. And then suddenly he's witnessing it and it caused his fascination, his paranoia even to flood through the roof and just get so interested in these stories and just, I think a part of it was he didn't feel so alone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, That's, I say it all the time. I say people after they have an encounter, the majority of them, they either become so just wanting to know more and it's almost like an addiction yeah. or they just shut down. And I'm starting to realize that the majority of it, the people just want to know, you know, they, yeah. they become obsessed. Like what yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Honestly, it really is like just kind of the theory that me and my dad came up with is that deer had probably, you know, for all extensive purposes, we'll say that this deer just disappeared. Okay. Um, that thing had probably been stalking my dad for weeks months even on end to the point that he knew that this that my dad was pretty close with this deer so if he were to replace the deer in theory my dad wouldn't take notice because that deer's there every damn every every night right my language. no you're fine you're fine wow so 
Yeah, so he the the dog man essentially put took the perfect time. Yeah, took the opportunity. He took it. Removed the deer from the equation, put itself in, and was probably hunting your dad. Right. Wow. And we have we have a lot of cats. They're all so precious. They're all so sweet. And they're kind of, they go in between the two houses to the barn, that type of deal. Um, and every single night that we've had an encounter with this thing or have had a weird experience that like we can't explain cats have been nowhere they usually like if you see my dad walking to the garage there's probably at least 10 cats following behind him right have so, you noticed like, any cats disappearing oh yeah all okay. the time all the time and like we have a lot of coyote in the area as well so like a lot of us just talked it up and i'm still not 100 percent convinced that it wasn't coyote um but like we would have cats that would be fine lovey-dovey all up on us and then the next day they were just gone mm -hmm. we also had cats that we would find just dead just out of nowhere like they would be literally fine maybe a little sickly and then they would just they would end up on our property or like we would just never see them again wow um <laughs> that's and, crazy that is crazy yeah yeah it, it, it's pretty insane um, like I said, my dad, um, it, it made his fascination go up in large amounts. Like, he became absolutely fascinated, having to know everything about everything yep. and what he looked at. Um, and so, you know, we're used to hearing, um, excuse me, we're used to hearing, like, Sasquatches ring off the mountain. We're used to getting activity and I don't know if you've heard this type of thing before, but what I've noticed in the pattern is like during the colder months, we get more Sasquatch activity. We hear more howls, we hear more whoops, we hear more knocks, yep. you know, like we have a lot more activity. More activity, time. yeah. Yeah, but when it's warmer, we tend to have more issues with the dogmen. Okay. And I, I can't quite explain that. Maybe there's like a weird migratory pattern. They come up with a deal on the sidelines. I'm not a dog man, you know? So like, I, can't, right. I can't say for sure what I would do in that scenario. But like, surely they have to cross paths, right? So like, maybe like there's this weird connection that like, or maybe it's just migratory patterns. You yeah, know? yeah. I think it's um, migratory. I think, you know, more or less... Uh, avoidance and one will do what it's best at doing and then you know like bigfoot sasquatch will just do its stuff you know in in the winter time you know as the yeah. woodsman and the dog man will kind of just i think they avoid each other as much as possible yeah i think so i i i think so um and there was there was just there was a lot of experiences from then on you know like just stuff that you couldn't quite explain my dad would talk about growling outside the window a lot like a lot and you know i've slept through a gunshot before so i don't wake up to stuff like that like if there was a house fire you'd have to drag me out of that house because i would not wake up right um and there would just be growling there would be scratching of a window cats would act weird the dogs would act weird um we've had we've had dogs like go straight up to the door and just sit there and stare or growl or bark or something like that oh. and like not too long after that we would hear a howl and like it would be so close to the house that it would startle you and at the same time you're like was that a coyote what is a coyote doing this close to the house right you know like usually they stay well away from humans if they can and like it would just be it would it would sound weird like it's just it would sound like a coyote but something would be off about it okay you know it would be like deeper or longer or something like that like i would i remember it was ironic almost uh, like there's more of a mass to whatever's creating that like it's yes. it's definitely a bigger creature it sounds similar to a coyote but it that's too big to be or the sound is too big to be made by a coyote 
Yeah, that's a perfect way to describe it, okay. genuinely. It's like it's a little too perfect. There's no flaw in the vocal cord. Right. Um, and, you know, it's so funny because I remember the first time I had heard this how we were ironically watching your show when this thing sounded off. And me and my dad just stopped look at each other and we're like what was that you know wow like it's stuff like that that like we just couldn't quite explain Mm -hmm. and by that point in time i'm living with them and i have heard my dad's story a million times and like it's not that i necessarily didn't believe him it's just i'm very much you have to see it to believe it type of person and on top of that I didn't doubt him because I think subconsciously I was testing him for like those two years, seeing if anything in his story would change and nothing did because I'm able to say it verbatim. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm able to retell his story pretty much verbatim as if he was telling it because the story never changed. And like, I would be talking to my dad and his hair would stand up on end. His goosebumps would be all over his arms. He seen something. You know, yeah. and I get a lot of, I get a lot of comments on TikTok, especially of like, you know, oh, it's a bear. It's an owl. It's the fire department, you know, like just different things to describe something that we all have witnessed. You right. Know? Right. Yeah. There's because... the people that like here on the channel, like a large portion of, you know, no, have had encounters and they know. There isn't even a guess to what it is. You know, we we know that these things exist. We just know because we've seen them, you know. Um, And then there's the people that just listen for entertainment and, you know, want to hear a scary story that they don't believe that it's real. But those of us who have seen these things know it's real. Mm -hmm. Like, I think there's always, like, the stories that you can tell that may be a little bit fabricated. But then there are others that are too imperfect right. to be fabricated. Yeah. You know, there's there's always room for human error in everything. Now, when your dad so, heard it um, growling around the home and stuff like that, um, was it like circling the house? Was it going by windows? Or did it ever mess with your younger brother after that, like at all? Like growl at like his bedroom or anything? Um. So... We would hear it a lot at my dad's bedroom window. Okay. Um, but on occasion, we would hear it directly underneath the kitchen window as well as in the living room as in the living room window as well. So it almost so, picked your dad out, kind of. Huh? I'm it, sorry. It kind of picked your dad out. It, I swear to God, it did. I swear it did. It's like me and my dad were talking about it literally like the other day of how I think. This creature is so fascinated with my father because my father didn't run away. Mm -hmm. He, in fact, confronted this thing, knowing well that this could be a losing battle. But he didn't care. He's trying to protect his family. He's trying to protect his cats. He's trying to protect everything. I swear my dad takes on a million different difficulties in one go. He is a superhuman of a human being. And I think just the mere idea that something that scary could be targeting his family intrigues him Mm -hmm. and also makes him very angry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's that Um, sense of curiosity that just, you know, when you said, like when you shared about your dad and how he kind of, you know, stood there for a moment on the porch, I recalled at that exact moment, I recalled standing in my encounter while I was standing in front of my friend's car, I was not being brave at all. I was like, right. what am I looking at? What What is going on? You know, this right. is too strange to be real, but it's actually in front of me. Right. It's like a morbid curiosity because these are things that nightmares are made of. This mm-hmm. is stuff that you tell children to scare them out of going outside at night. Yes, yes, Like, exactly. this isn't supposed to be reality. Yep. Wow. And yeah. I... I think that's the most interesting part about it for me at the very least is like 
the, like I said, these are things that nightmares are made of. These are things that scare children, scare grown adults. And then there's the occasional adult like me that goes to sleep listening to these types of stories, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but it's always going to affect somebody in a completely different way. And I think for my dad, it affected him in the way that he was so intrigued by this creature that, like he said, it's not that I want to see it again. It's just that I want to see it again. Yeah. You know? Almost Where, like, like a, a second, just kind of have that second, uh, second view or second opinion or whatever, you know, I've seen it oh, once, yeah. but I need to see this thing again. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like after my brother experienced what he did, after my dad experienced what he did, that just started three, almost four years of just straight stalking from okay. this thing. Like it became a reality. Like I would make jokes on the way home. Like I would always have to be on the phone with somebody as I was driving home at night. Um, just in case I seen this thing, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be alone, you know, like they can't come over to the phone and help me, but you know, they can hear me scream and that's confirmation. Right. Right. Um, At least someone knows something. Yeah. Somebody knows something happened. Um, and I would always make jokes of being like, oh yeah, it's all fun and games until you see the werewolf in the backyard, you know, like, <laughs> right. and I think I used humor as a really big way to cope with just the simple fact I felt preyed on every single night I would get out of my car. And like I said to you, like right before we started recording, like it wouldn't be every night at all. It would just be like some nights I wouldn't even have to turn on my flashlight. I could walk, I could stand and pet the cats. I could do whatever I wanted. I could watch the moon. I could watch the stars and nothing would happen. And I would feel completely safe and then that there were other nights where i didn't even have time to turn on my flashlight because i'm booking it to the house that fast my dad would have to come out on the porch some nights and walk me from my car to the house he would always be armed and i had a weird experience in my car shortly before my own encounter um in which i pulled up in the driveway and after this I started parking in a completely different area than what I was supposed to. It was to the point my dad got annoyed at me and was like, you need to park there. And I'm like, I don't want to park there. <laughs> like, um, and so I was jamming out to whatever I was listening to off of my phone. Um, maybe I was on the phone, something like that. I think I was listening to music though. Um, and I just turned the music down. I had just turned my car off and I heard a deep guttural, guttural growl from behind my car. Wow. And I stopped. I immediately started shaking and I called my dad and, and I was like, yeah, you got to come out here. Something's, something's messing with me. Like something does not want me to get out of this car. Right. And he never seen it, never seen nothing. So it makes me wonder if it was literally just toying with me because I'm pretty sure these things like to toy with you. Yeah, I'm pretty they, sure like they like to mess with you a lot. There's some sort of, uh, I, I don't know if it's, um, it's almost like an excitement for them. They like to terrorize yeah. human beings. It's, you know, right. like we're humans, like you said, these are what nightmares are are made of and I had discussed once uh, there's a book that was written by uh, an anthropologist and he, he describes like um, Neanderthal possibly looking like dog man and it's scientific like this is a scientist talking about it but yet he describes how the fear of these things are instilled like we don't even have to watch a werewolf movie as a kid but right. we already know we already envision something like that and right. it's like it's just instilled in our brains throughout history that these things are what stalked our ancestors right i remember reading this one creepy pasta i know it's creepy pasta but i remember reading this one creepy pasta that was like why are humans so afraid of like the grotesque you know like the sharp fangs the red eyes the snarled face why did werewolves become an act of mythology and legend yeah you know like what was so normalized that is no longer normalized in see fantasy yeah 
like, I think humans naturally, like, of course, there's, like, the uncanny valley effect, you know? Like, I think humans are naturally afraid or confused about something that looks human isn't quite human or something that is terrorizing, Mm -hmm. you know? But what defines fear, you know? Exactly. what pushed humans to have such an in grained legend has some factual information to it no matter how much it is tweaked it all came from somewhere right yeah and that's kind of how i've always looked at it is i've i've always been like a deep believer in a lot of different cryptids you know so i think coming to the realization that you're being stalked by one of these creatures is it's it's like an ego death and also like a reminder of your morality yeah because humans have always been viewed on top of the food chain for hundreds of years at this point so like the mere idea that something could top that is scary it's very it's like fear of the unknown in a way absolutely when did Um, you have your first sighting so i had a mini sighting and so much so that like I wouldn't even call it a sighting for my first one. Okay. Um, um, if you're looking at the map right now, there's like from with from Withville to uh, I'm gonna say Austinville. That would be a good placement. Okay. Um, there's an in between little town called Fort Chiswell, and in Fort Chiswell. If you go down a certain road, you go to Major Graham Mansion. And Major Graham Mansion is a very big historical site. It was very important in the Civil War. It was an old plantation home, a lot of dark history, a lot of dark history surrounding that home. Um, And what we tend to do as teenagers, as young adults who have nothing better to do, and at that point the pandemic has started and 3 a.m. Walmart is is no longer a thing. Um, (laughs) So... What you do is you just drive. You you go down dirt roads in the middle of the night. Like, this road probably did not get paved until, like, two years ago. Right. Like, it's truly, like, just one of those, like, landmarks that are so forgotten in time. And it's it's just one of those places that like you tend to go to, you know, like it turned into a massive haunted attraction. And when it's not a haunted attraction, it's just there. It's a mansion. Like a local kind of local haunted attraction where the kids go. And now is it inhabited? Um, no. Okay. So it's abandoned. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it's been inhabited now for quite a few years after the attraction became a thing. Okay. Um, well, directly in front of the mansion, there is a creek and there is another dead end road that you go to. You eventually have to turn around because it's on private property. Um, but there's a creek directly in front of the mansion. And I was there with my, with my friend and my now ex fiance. Um, we were there and we were just chilling at the creek. Um, we were looking for crawdads. We were just looking for frogs mainly. I think we were frog hunting that night because you catch frogs, I guess, you know? <laughs> like, um, and I noticed that my friend, um, who I'll refer to as D, um, he, he wasn't around us as much as we would have liked, you know? Like, I was kind of the in-between between, like, the car, the creek, and the mansion, you know? Um, while D was more close to the mansion and he kept looking up on the hill and, you know, I, I, I'm kind of spiritually entombed. So when you kind of feel like something's going on, when you have a bad feeling, you tend to just kind of make sure your people are okay. If you're with people right. or get out of there, if you're alone. Yeah. Um, and I was just, I was paying very heavy attention to D and about that point, he starts backing up and his eyes are wide as marbles. And all he says to me is get in the car and me being, I think freshly 18 at this point in time was like, why am I getting in the car? Why are like, why are we leaving? 
And he said, get in the freaking car now. And at about that point in time, I listened. It was a little bit harder to get my fiance in the car. Um, and we peel out of there so fast that I don't even know what's going on. Um, and I look in the rear view mirror and there's something big and black in the road. And the only reason that I have a very strong indicator that it was a dog man is because of how D described what he seen. Okay. What he said was that it came up on the hill and it looked down at him and it was blacker than black and its ears were as wide as bat ears. Very common theme. Yeah, yeah. It's a very common, common theme. So, like, that was technically technically my first experience but my true real deal i've seen something experience i was actually with my stepmom which i'm so grateful that i was because honestly i think had i have saw it alone i would have thought that i was crazy and i would have never even kind of brought it up to anybody maybe my dad maybe my dad right. but like probably nobody else so we have a friend that lives not even five minutes, five minutes at most, but not even five minutes away from our house on the other side of the neighborhood. And this isn't truly a neighborhood. It's not like those like um, townhouse buildings type deal. Like this is like what I mean by neighborhood is like a five minute drive. <laughs> right. Um, just your neck of the woods kind of. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, like that little, just that little dot on the map, yep. that little dot on the map, that little holler, just, just your, if you get off on the interstate at the wrong part of my town, you'll look at your husband and say you're lost. Okay. It's, it's that type of town where like you, you're not supposed to be here, <laughs> you know? Um, so we were leaving our friend's house at probably about. 10, 11, maybe 12 at the latest. So we were leaving. We had had a wonderful night. I think we ate some really good food, hung out all day. And my stepmom was driving. And we pull out of her driveway and not even a hundred yards up the road, I seen really bright circles for eyes. But it didn't even really have eye shine. I mean, it did, but it didn't. It was like, all I seen were like two big yellow circles. And I thought it was a deer and it was standing in the middle of the road. But I got an eerie feeling, as did my stepmom. Like immediately, I think subconsciously I knew it wasn't a deer, but what else could it have been? Right. Um, so we drive up on this thing. And we stop at exactly where we've seen it in the road. It's no longer in the road at that point in time. Um, and we stop directly where we've seen it in the road. And I'm looking. So I'm on the passenger side, which I'm on the direct, not even two foot away from me. There is an embankment. And on this embankment, there's a fence. And it's cor it is surrounded in shrubbery and... Like, it's an incline. So, like, if you're going to be standing to where somebody can see you, you're going to have to be standing downhill and still be tall enough to reach the fence. Okay. Um, so, I'm looking. I can't see anything. But then I did. Because I think this thing was camouflaging pretty deep. And I think it realized that we couldn't see it. So it wanted to get out of there as quick as possible. The only thing that I can say, if it wasn't a dog man, it had to have been a horse. And that makes no sense. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it was as big as a horse. And its its snout was as long as a horse's mouth. Okay. And it was so black that when the headlights hit it, it was silver. And I think the longer you go after your encounter, the more stuff you start to remember. But at the same time, you're kind of gaslighting yourself. You're like, no, I'm just making this up. Like, 
yeah, I've seen this, but surely I couldn't see this part in it, you know? Um, what I could have swore that I seen was the shape of the ear. I did. I think I've seen like teeth, but that part's a little fuzzy. Either way, this thing, I seen its mouth and it easily ranged from like where your corner of your mouth would be would, it ended right at like the start of the base of the ear. And I feel like I seen the nostril and this thing was standing hunched over and it was still as tall as our truck on that incline behind mm-hmm. a fence. And all it did was it turned its face, took one step back, and it was gone. Wow. That's all. That's all it was is it was gone. Did your stepmom, well, I mean, obviously she probably saw it too because you're probably sitting there in fear. Oh, yeah. Like, she hit the gas after that, and we spent the entire rest of the drive home cursing. Yeah. Like, we freaked. So whatever that thing was, when you saw it in the road as you're approaching, it it jumped the fence and stood in that incline and watched you guys. Yeah, had to have. It had to have have blended in, too, because I did not see it until it moved backwards. Right. Which is not behavior of a horse. No, (laughs) definitely not behavior of a horse. Um, I think that horse would have been well gone by the time we approached it. Yeah, yeah. Um, And, like, I remember, I feel like I kind of seen it turn its head a little bit, and then we're approaching it, you know, and it's already out of the road by that point in time. So I think it turned its head, realized we were coming, and was like, oh, crap, and, like, ducked into the shrubbery. And then we stopped directly where where it was at, and it probably thought we were stupid and stepped away. (laughs) Because in all fairness, I think we were being a little stupid that night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's crazy. I mean, just yeah. to see it, know that it's, know that you guys saw something. And then, I mean, it's kind of, it, it's kind of hard to uh, deny because it's yeah. there and then it's jumping. That, that's just must have baffled both of you like freaked really. out because it's like whatever this thing was it's huge it jumped that and then watched us and then left without really being seen <laughs> yeah like it took one step back and it was gone <clears throat> yeah it's terrifying yeah like it was it was genuinely <clears throat> i've had a couple more encounters since then but that one stands out in my mind the most because of one how close i was and two just it knew we were looking at it. Mm-hmm. Like it had to have seen us in that truck. It had to have seen every it every detail. Yeah, you know, it's like, looking this down thing at you. Has night vision. Yeah, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I had to see every single detail. Probably see the look on our faces, and that part scares me the most. Because directly after that, after that encounter, we had like constant howls growls scratching dogs acting weird cats disappearing for probably a good month Mm. and like you gotta think this is five minutes up the road so it makes me think like what if that thing stopped us or you know it can smell it's a predator it can smell really really well so it probably may attract our scent all the way back to our house or the scarier thought it's the one that's been stalking us all along yeah yeah and that it was just it's it's always stood out in my mind because you know you experience things like this and you, your first immediate thought is it was something else it's something different but when you have another person with you it's like a whole different ball game because you're looking at them they're looking at you they're they're easily just as scared as you are so what are you looking at right and It was just, it was wild. We would have some of the wildest nights where we would get the craziest activity. And then some nights we would just be able to sit in the, in the picnic table and like smoke a cigarette or something and have a good night. Hmm. Um, that's insane. uh, I'm sorry. I just said that's insane. Yeah. I have a friend 
who um, we went to Washington, D.C. as a day trip. And it's easily like a six-hour drive. So we, um, I made it home at about 3 o'clock that morning. And I'm in my house. I'm safe. I'm telling them about my trip to D.C. I'm bringing back food. I think I had like Waffle House or something like that. And meanwhile, my friend is pulling out of the driveway, and she looks into the cornfield, which is directly adjacent, directly diagonal from our house, and she sees the exact same thing that I had just described to her because I told her my dad's story that night. Um, I, she's seen the exact same thing that I had described to her ducking down away from her into the cornfield. So, like, it's not just my family either. It's my friends that experience this. Like, you don't go on my heel without having some form of an experience when you leave. Yeah, yeah. And, like, she described this as she said it had the same type of ears, but it had a shorter snout and it was more brown. Okay. And that was kind of the only difference that we truly had in, like, our encounters. But it had the same type of bat ears. And that's such a common theme every single time. Right. Um, I remember that same friend was over for, I think, Christmas. I think she was dropping off Christmas presents for my brothers. Um and my dad, it was an, it was a particularly eerie night. It was one of those nights that like we would stay inside, you know? And my dad, I think wanted to spook her a little bit and was like, Hey, let's walk out into the field, you know? <laughs> and so, and so we walked out into the field and I went with her cause I didn't want her to be afraid. And meanwhile, we all three got afraid. Like we had such an eerie feeling that night that I remember I got so sick to my stomach, I almost threw up. And she said that she had looked to the right and seen something running and ducked under, like ducked beside the wood pile. And at that point she was already walking to the house. She was like, I'm done. We're not doing this. <laughs> I'm not doing this no more. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Like we've had some pretty, you, yeah. Like I said, like it's really hard to sit here and say this is something fake. Yeah, this never yeah. happened. When you're having multiple people experience the same thing, the same type of growling and scratching would be outside of my granny's window. Yeah, I was just gonna bring that up. Um, during on your TikTok, um, you had mentioned on a video, um, that I had scanned through, uh, your grandmother and a white thing. That's what I caught. I didn't hear the whole thing because I was actually looking for your dad's experience. Um, and funny enough, my, my oldest daughter listened to your dad's because she found it, but I didn't. Oh, that's um, cool. So, I was wondering how you were able to find me. Yeah. So how, what what is the experience that your grandmother or you had mentioned about this white thing? What 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 is that all? Um, I'm trying to think of what you're referring to, because I feel like I know what instance you're talking about, but for some reason my brain is, like, not connecting the dots. Um, I will tell you, she had the same type of growling and scratching outside of her window. Okay. But this was, like, for years before the initial encounter with my brother. And like, this is on the same property, because, like, oh, pretty yeah. much your grand grandma's house and your grandfather's house and your parents' house is right there. Same property, pretty much yeah, just yeah, fam family same, land. Yeah. It's same property, different houses. And we have a family graveyard in the back. Oh, there's a the graveyard. In yeah. The we have a graveyard. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, a lot well, of I say that TNT, because dog cool. men are said to be attracted to graveyards. Well, you know what? That's probably why he's here. <laughs> it's like, that's been crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. It would explain why he would keep coming back if he wasn't fascinated in us. Wow. Um, but I think I remember what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if it was your grandmother or if it was an older woman. I just had scanned through because I had heard I was I was looking for a video clip. And I was, I'm not good with TikTok, so I was like kind of just scrolling or swiping. And I I saw you and you were talking about, dog. I saw Appalachian and Dogman. And I was like, ooh, what's this? So I started listening to you. And then you had mentioned my channel. 
and then I clicked on your icon to see what else you were going to talk about. And I was like, okay, what, what is she going to mention here? And, um, you had said something about a white thing. And I was like, what's this? That's what caught me. I don't know. I, and I didn't, I, then I started scrolling more. So I didn't. Right. Um, my granny had experienced like white figures running by the window a lot. And she would also like see stuff like that in the distance where like it'd be just out of range of eyesight, but you could tell something's there. And she would, she would get so scared that like she wouldn't really give so, too much info into it. She would just say that there was always like this, this white figure that was at her bedroom window, always on the same nights that like there would be growling underneath the window. Oh, wow. Okay. And like, it would only be then. It would never be any other time. Okay. Huh. Um, my grandpa and my dad went to the woods and they were chopping down. I, I think they were getting like lumber, something like that. Um, we have a wood stove, so we run completely by wood. Right. So you have to constantly have like a wood a wood pile. So they were they were probably chopping down like an old tree or something like that, like something easy. And while they were there, I think it managed to piss something off because it's growling, it's making noises, it's snapping branches, and it's really like scaring the crap out of both of them all at the same time. And um, the day, ironically, that I went viral on TikTok with my dog man encounters. Um, they had another experience in which, um, something had ran behind the truck and started like bothering the cars Okay. and stuff like that. But that's about the extent that I know of that encounter. Hmm. Um, and there's just, there's so much. The thing that got you viral on TikTok was the howl that you shared Yes. Where did you capture that? Can you tell us about that? Yes. Um, it was March 2021. It was probably at about easily 11 to 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, and me and my dad, whenever there was a lot of activity out, we would always run outside to try to hear it because mm -hmm. it always fascinated us. Um, and it was just a really quick bonding experience, you know. So the night in question, the dogs had been going crazy through the neighborhood. They were howling. They were barking. They were snarling. They were going insane. And coyotes were yelling at some point during the night. And then they just like abruptly stopped. And at about that point, the first howl started. And then I, me and him are giddy. I caught it on camera. I'm sitting here saying, God, I hope that picked up on camera. Like, I'm excited. And then about that time, a second howl howls off. And it sounds, I don't know if it's like, the closer it sounds, the farther away it is, or vice versa. I'm not sure which one. Right. Um, but it sounded a little bit closer at that point in time. And then me and my dad, are, I think, are about to go inside by that point in time. And we're just, we're happy, we're excited, we're ready to listen to the footage. And a third howl goes off, which is the loudest one. It's the longest one, and you can hear every single vocal cord just ringing off. Mm. And we, the way that our um, community is, it's like we're right next to a bridge where the new river runs. Okay. And it was easily down that gorge, like down that bluff close to the new river. Wow. That's crazy. Not, it really was. It was so cool, though. No, I no, think, I'm sure. Um, I think, like, I had been experiencing this for, like, over a year at that point in time. So, like, when I hear these things, I'm like, yo, that's so cool. Right, right. While another person would be freaked out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would be really stoked to hear something like that, you know? Like, But then 
the person that doesn't have this fascination would be like, what was that? You know, get really nervous and this and that. But yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, I don't know if you if you'd be willing to uh, let me use that howl so people could hear the howl here. Um, oh yes, absolutely. And then, I like I said, I'm gonna put the link to your TikTok um, in because you are uh, just to let everyone know um, she's got a following and people are sharing experiences with you and you're kind of sharing them on your TikTok too. Yeah. 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 It's like a mixture. It doesn't matter kind of what it is, um, whether it be cryptid, paranormal, whatever. Um, I told people to send their stories through my Instagram and I haven't got a chance to get to all of them. Hopefully I will, but there, there's some pretty interesting ones that people have sent to me. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, how about let me ask you something uh we talked about this a little bit <clears throat> and because of like the mining communities and stuff like that and uh appalachia i and your your grandmother talking about the light things do you do you think like you know the people talk about um the crawlers and you know the creepy pasta name for them is the rake yeah. Um, I, I, I despise creepy pastas now. I, I used to love them, you know, you, prior, but once I realized that creepy pastas have a negative effect on cryptozoology that I just kind of just, I, I just disregard them. But do you think that, that these crawler things uh, could, do you think what your grandmother had seen could have possibly been some of those crawler things? I'm going to be honest with you. I thought about it. Mm. I really did because we have a neighbor that's currently dealing with them. Okay. So I've thought about it. I don't know. I really don't. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think there's a very high possibility of it because, like I said, we have a neighbor that's currently dealing with not only a dog man, but dealing with a crawler as well. And I feel like combining the two are very scary. Yeah. Yeah. The most um, definitely. Um, so I think that it's very possible because it's unlike anything that, that we have experienced, but it obviously freaks her out, you know? Right. Um, I think I just, I don't know enough about the cryptid on top of that. I don't know enough about my grandmother's encounter because she's way too scared to really talk about it um to kind of definitively say that yes i'm pretty sure that they they're very interesting and for your neck of the woods i mean i when i think of appalachia and the people i've talked to you know a lot of my subscribers are from kentucky Virginia, West Virginia, Tennessee, um, you know, a lot of area where there's, you know, old kind of um, stories that were talked about, you know, like just yeah. that were, you know, like cryptozoology, people don't talk about Sasquatch like they used to back in the day. Right. Um, so I kind of, I, I really think that these things live in the old mines um you know i i think possibly that these crawler things that people see may be mistaken for something we talked about privately feral people yeah. um you know and and those those things and i say things because i mean if you're a feral person and you've lived in the woods for generations, like let's say seven generations of people, you're eventually just not a person at that point. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's like through, more animalistic. Through like you know, how inner, to off of the yeah, land. like interbreeding and you know that like the the whole kind of animalistic lifestyle right. has really changed genetic codes and stuff. So oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to think like. We'll use snake breeding as just an offhand topic. Yeah. You know, like, 
let's say you have like a whole new batch of ball pythons that you're trying to breed. You're trying to breed a new morph. Yep. You know, they cull the ones that are aggressive and they keep the ones that are more human friendly, that are okay with touch, stuff like that. When you think about it in terms of humans, everybody has, I mean, think of like the feral children. Like there are countless of stories of children being raised by monkeys, being raised by wolves. And they just, they have this look in their eye. They've never experienced society in the way that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's such a culture shock for them. And if they've been at that point, like maybe they don't know how to talk. If they know how to talk, it's not very well. Like there's so much that comes into like the concept of feral people that like, you know, you're warned about people in the woods. Mm -hmm. You're constantly warned about people in the woods. I remember my Mimi would yank me in when the street lights would come on and be like, you don't want the boogeyman to come get you. Yeah. You know, who's the boogeyman? <laughs> you know? Um, and there's just, there are so many stories of people getting attacked by these people. In your neck of the woods, in your area? Um, maybe not so much in the neck of in my neck of the woods, but definitely in the Appalachian mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Of uh, like just, I, I, I listen to scary stories going to sleep most nights. So I, he I hear constantly stories of people getting attacked by people that are just very clearly living in the woods. Yeah. I've covered a couple of them that I've stumbled across that are just absolutely terrifying. And yeah, you know, it's just it, that that's a whole new and I, I like I said, I, I mean, I think feral human, feral person is just a politically correct name because I, I don't think they are human at that point. You know what I mean? There is a there is a lot of change going on. Um, right. It takes a lot of rehabilitation. Yeah. If you're going to make them a quote unquote productive member of society. Right. And you got to think like that in itself is trauma. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a lot of trauma on the brain. That's a lot of trauma on your psyche. So putting, going from, this is such like a crude way to put it, but like going from eating berries to suddenly having steak dinners amongst yeah. like hundreds of people at a crowded restaurant on a Saturday night. Like that's a lot. That's a lot of change. That's a lot of culture shock. Yeah. That these people that is even if they can be, be rehabilitated that is even if they can be real rehabilitated i mean a lot of times exactly. you hear I, I have i had one encounter a lady reached out to me and she had driven she lived deep i believe in virginia i don't i mean i've had so many uploads that i don't recall exact locations but she was driving west virginia it was west virginia actually she her driveway was a mile long and it was full of potholes and it was dirt and she got to her trailer and she saw these feral whatever humans one was carrying an arm and it ran what? into the woods what she, was carrying an arm you a, said? a human arm oh god and then she had seen um she ended up moving her husband was a tractor trailer driver so she was alone most of the time and when they ended up moving they had seen these things in the trees watching you know standing on branches in the woods standing watching them right that's so, why a lot of like <clears throat> when it comes to um cryptid stories i cannot remember her name for the life of me but there's this girl on tiktok that has like a podcast said like don't look in the trees yeah and it's for what reason i say that all the time don't don't or you should look in the trees actually to make sure True. you know True. That... only look if you're brave enough <laughs> yeah yeah because like you really don't know what's looking back at you and you don't know whether it's a mountain lion or a person yep. you know like you have to be aware of your surroundings in the woods you have no idea what's watching you like we've had a couple experiences in the woods that have been absolutely terrifying that we had you know it's like those types of situations where like you have no business being there but you're there so you might as well make the best of it mm -hmm. um and kind of going off 
of just everything that happened with the dog men and everything. Once our puppy became old enough to know how to use his legs, he has been running constantly in the woods. And he's been bringing not only his brother, but our our, fr- our, <laughs> our Franny, who has Lyme disease, <laughs> been dragging them all through the woods. And they'll be gone for days. Days. You, you search these woods. You can't find them. You can't hear them. The woods is quiet. There's not a bird to be heard every single time you step in those woods and they're there. Yeah. And you cannot find these dogs. You're pretty sure they're never going to come back. And then they come back. A day or two later, they're back. Yeah. And you know what? One day, we couldn't keep them out of the woods. We had no idea why. My dad was mad. He tried to figure out ways to keep these dogs in a confined area to where they could not, you know, we had to take them out to use the bathroom. They could not get out. They could not run. Well, they disappeared for a couple of days, came back. And then that we left them in the house that night, and that next morning there was a deer skull sitting directly on our porch, and we have no idea how it got there. Hmm. <laughs> and we've had just bones pop up in our yard. We have no idea how they get there. And, like, we've had, like, a full spine of a deer appear in our yard before. Like, it's stuff that, like, if a deer has passed, has already decom- decomposition, has stuff get on him in the woods, it's that type of bone. Yeah. You know, where yeah. it looks previously undisturbed. Right. So what is it doing? On your porch. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> that's creepy. Like, this should be deep in the woods. Most definitely. Most definitely. Listen, we're coming up on time. Um and we've talked for a while. I don't want to take up too much of your time. But do me a favor. Don't hang up when we end the interview because I'd like to talk to you for a little bit uh, oh, yeah, that's after. Fine. Now, um, like I said in the beginning, uh, I'm going to share Brooke's TikTok with everyone. It'll be in the description below. She's got a lot of very interesting stuff going on. And um, I think you guys will like it. It's going to be in the description below. Um the howl that we talked about will be at the end of all this. Um, so I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us. And um, you know, hopefully you can talk your dad into coming on and sharing his experience. Let him know that it's not that hard to uh, come on and share. It's pretty easy. So oh, hopefully, yeah, for sure. I really hope that this isn't the last time that we speak. I really enjoyed this. I don't this. think it will be. I don't yeah. think it will be. I really enjoyed this, and I have so much more to tell. I'm and looking just, forward to it. Yes, for sure. I'm looking forward to this again. All right. Don't hang up. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. And, um, Thank you. It was my pleasure. All right. Stay safe, all right? Thank you. All right, everyone. That was an amazing interview. This is the audio clip of Brooke and her dad out in the backyard and they catch some very, very strange howls. Check it out.
dogs is like, these dogs in this neighborhood goes crazy over anything. Yeah, that's a weird damn owl, whatever it is. The coyotes went off. But other than that. I don't care how cold it is out there. I want to just lay all in on my love. So some very chilling audio to end Brooks' interview off with. Um, you can hear her and her dad conversating while they're outside recording the audio for what they believe is the dog man. Now you are going to hear Brooke's dad side of the experiences that went on. Let's get into that. All right, everyone. Today I have a guest um, that I've been aware of uh, for about a year, maybe a year and two, three months. I had a young woman on the show. Um, she had or has a TikTok account and she was on TikTok, shared a lot of her encounters and had mentioned my name, my channel's name one day and my daughter brought it up and I reached out to her and I had Brooke on the channel. She shared a lot of her experiences, um, what she had seen, what her family had seen, not a lot of what her family had seen. And then a vocalization that her and her dad caught. Um, today, I have uh, her dad with us. Her dad's name's Dale. And uh, I'm going to introduce you guys to Dale right now. Dale, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm well. I am well. Uh, Dale and I have had a chance to talk and, um, you know, get get familiar with each other. Um, and get comfortable with each other prior to the interview. And uh, I know that he's had a lot of stuff um, going on where he lives. Now, where exactly, if you, you don't have to say like an exact uh, location, but what state and uh, do you live in, uh, county, if you're comfortable with? Uh, it's a little place called With County, Virginia. Okay. All right. And growing up there, um, when did all of this start for you? Um, like stories that you heard as a kid, uh, you know, I'll, I'll turn the mic over to you at that point right now. Um, and you can kind of fill us in where everything kind of started for you and when you first, uh, became aware of dog man. All right, well, when I was growing up, my granny would always warn me about our woods and stuff and tell me to stay out of them at the boogeyman would get you or the boogers was down in there or whatnot. Um, I just kind of thought of something she told us as kids. Well, I do a lot of hunting and stuff, used to when I was younger. And I would notice bent trees or broken trees, uh, little nest-looking things like piled-up brush. And I would hear a lot of what you hear on uh, Bigfoot research channels and stuff. Uh, a lot of the sounds, the hoops, the hollers, and the screams. So I just kind of accepted the fact that, hey, you know, they're Bigfoot whatever you want to call them, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, whatnot. I thought these dog men was misidentified as a Bigfoot. I thought kind of the way somebody was looking at them, they might have been stepping up, and the foot is so big, how the toes pivot yep. on your foot. I always thought, you know, that they were just seeing the foot up in the air, and that was the dog haunch, the haunched leg. Okay. Well, um, never really thought much about the issue. I just thought I was misidentified. Never could get my head wrapped around that there were dog men. Did, before we go any further, um, did you ever see physically a, a Bigfoot growing up? Now, here's the thing. Uh, I have a memory. My grandmother, she liked to fish. 
Okay. And she cleaned her own fish. And I remember she was cutting the heads off the fish, and she took them into the house. And I went in with her, and I come out, and there used to be this big grapevine, and I almost looked like a brush pile right beside her house. Well, I come around there. I was maybe, guess, five, six years old, and I come around the corner of the house, and there was a creature standing there about my height. So it would be, you know, maybe four foot tall, right. four and a half foot tall. Grabbed those fish heads and took off back towards the holler. Wow. What did it look like? Do you vaguely remember, like, what it looked it, like? It was black and his face was hairy. It was not a dog man now that I know. Now I, I know that it was a Sasquatch. I seen a, a little juvenile Bigfoot. That's crazy. And I, and but it's one of those memories that is kind of distorted. Okay. I remember getting real upset and running in the house crying and telling my granny there was, and I think I might even call it a booger. There's a booger or something out there. Right. And she come out and there wasn't nothing there. But uh, that's a memory that just it's like it's burning to my head. Yeah, yeah. Of my childhood. And she she probably believed you because the fish head weren't there. It's not like you're gonna, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah she uh, the the scale the um, backbone and everything where she was flaying the fish, all that was gone. The fish heads was gone, and that was just one of these things, you know, that I kind of put out of my head. And it's one of these memories now that I'm an adult, and it's just kind of there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, that's really intense. You know, I mean. I've had, and I'm sure a lot of us growing up have had those memories, you know, that just stick with us. Something we saw when we were a kid. Like I've had like a paranormal thing happen when I was about that age that I will not forget to the, you know, to this day. Um, right. But I could never imagine being a little guy and, and seeing a, you know, a young juvenile dog, man. I, I'd be right in that same boat crying myself. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um... It was, it's definitely different. That's the only way I can describe it. And the whole dog man thing come about by accident. And I was on up with my wife and my kids. Uh, my youngest son was probably about three. Okay. I was getting him ready for bath. I'd already put him in the bathtub, got him some toys, you know, <clears throat> got him situated. And I was going back through the house to get the older boy they're uh, about a year apart about a year and a half apart and um they take a bath together is what i'm getting at right right well i got about halfway through the house and i heard jason come through there just wide open squalling scared wow and he was describing something looking at him through the window he said daddy had had uh, a snout it had pointy ears it was black and gray now he was the one that was in the bath or what was he the one that you were getting no he was the one that was in the tub yeah because i remember brooke wet. i remember brooke talking about that experience yeah wow well he was already wet when i say he come out of that bathtub he came out of the bathtub he was physically in the tub yep Taking a bath, he was wet. I mean, he come through the house soaking wet, squalling. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> being dumb, I thought, well, hey, it might have been a coyote. Popped up and looked at him through the window. But what is the odds a coyote would do that? We have a lot of coyote around here. Right, yeah. And I got to thinking to myself, I was like, man, what is the odds a coyote would do that? Well, so I just brushed it off. Kid, he seen something, scared him, shadow, whatnot. About two weeks later, that's when I realized what the baby had seen. Because uh, I have a garage down on my property uh build race cars and engines and just do generally it's a man cave right well i made a couple trips down through our long story short 
I'd walk down from my house, walk down to the garage. I have a certain deer that would come about every evening, and she would stand about the same place, and I'd talk to her. I would tell her she's pretty and all that, you know, just mm-hmm. a little old deer. Well, I had walked down to the garage, stayed in there, fooled around maybe 30 minutes. I come back out. She was still standing there. So I looked at her, and I may have talked to her, may have spoke to her a little bit, and I walked on back up to my house. I went up. I think I went to get me a pack of cigarettes. I got me a pack of cigarettes, come back down, and this is about a... Let's say a 75 yard stretch there between the garage and the house. Okay. I went up there, got me a pack of cigarettes or whatnot, and I come back down through there, and it, she was still standing there. And, and it's like, it's oh, dark. Yeah. It's dark, right? Yeah it, yeah, it was starting to just get dark. Okay. Just dark enough to where you can't really make out what it exactly was. Yeah. And I took it as that's my deer's because I believe it was on its haunches. And this makes sense to you when I tell you what happens. So I walked on by the garage. I paid it some attention. I walked into the garage. I stayed maybe 10, maybe 10, 15 more minutes. And I come back. I was going back up to my house. And I looked at her like, you still here, girl? And I stopped dead in my tracks because it was a lit night. The moon was bright. You could see, but not features. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. And some just didn't look right. I seen big black looking eyes. And I seen like a little gray in the face. And I stopped dead in my tracks. I turned to it. I took about two steps to it. I cocked my head sideways, and I said, what are you? About that time, that sucker flowed down like a snake and went down behind an old cop car we've got sitting on the property, down the passenger side of it, from from the back, down the passenger side. So I'm like, oh, damn, what was that? So I walked on up to it because I don't know if I was just dumb or in shock. I did not know what this was. So I leaned up the passenger side, and it was not there. And I sidestepped to the driver's side and leaned up, looked up the driver's side. Nothing was there. And I thought to myself, well, hey, man, this thing is playing with me. This thing is really smart. It's going to wait for me to get out of sight, and it's going to take off because that's what I would do. So... I literally backed up about 10 yards back, walking backwards, turned around, briskly walked to my house, walked up on the steps like I normally would, walked right straight to my door, but instead of going through the door, I shot down the side of my house to the end of the porch and stuck my head out the corner. That's when I seen the thing going on all fours right up. It's like this little... uh, I guess you call it a little road. It goes right through the middle of our field. I keep mowed to walk, and I'm actually on it just to walk around and talk and be on the property without disturbing the hay. Okay. It was going up that. And at that time, only part of the field was cut. Well, it was on all fours going up that little road, and it looked like it was like six to eight inches off the ground. I could literally see the elbows of the front legs. It was weird how it moved. I could see the tail. It had a, the tail looked as long as it. Well, it got to the top of that road right where everything was nice and mowed. Mm -hmm. And it went to cross that, uh, another little road that ties into it. And then it would go into the part of the field that was not cut. And it had hay standing about to my chest. So say about four foot tall hay. Well, it got to the hay. And that thing stood up, dude. And I watched it walk out of sight down over the little hill down into our woods. And I could see the ears from the moonlight. It blowed my mind. Yeah, yeah, wow. I remember Brooke talking about the police car. And 
and see you see in it but she didn't get into such detail cuz obviously she didn't she was going off of what you you know you had seen um when it stood up how high above the the hay field was it i say this critter was about 6 foot tall not counting his ears okay he wasn't what you would call lanky but his his mass matched his body if that makes sense okay stocky now, pretty stocky yeah i say uh i say it'd be uh kind of built like how a greyhound would be lean but you know what i'm saying yep muscular but muscular but kind lean of- like you said lean yeah right and big barrel chest kind of you know what i'm saying yes sir yep uh, but I will say, well, I missed a part there. When I was leaning up the cop car, looking at the passenger side, I kept feeling like something was behind me. So I turned around and there's a wood pile there. And that's all it was there. There was a wood pile, but I, I felt like something was behind me. And then I thought to myself, well, you just exposed your back to whatever this is at the car so i spun back around and that's when i started to back up and back out of the situation well about a year and a half later i know why there's two of them we burn wood in the winter i come out probably about 10 o'clock grab armload of wood just to grab another armload of wood you know just basically went out, got some wood. Yep. I heard an odd sound. It wasn't like a growl. It wasn't quite a grunt. It was kind of like a chest sound. And I had a little bitty rinky-dink little light about the size of my pinky, just enough to see. And I threw them lights up. And we have an old farm ball, 504 International Tractor. It's not like a great big tractor, but it's not a small tractor. Yeah. Uh, the the fenders on it, I'm about 5'9", and the fenders, I can lay my chin on the fender. Well, I shined the light over there towards the tractor where I heard the sound, and there was a set of eyes about six to eight inches above the fender. And a few feet behind it was another set of eyes and both of these eyes was probably give or take about six and a half seven foot off the ground and when i was looking at it they literally started backing up and backed up about five feet and turned and walked off back towards the woods there's no deer that's going to do that no no and, you know, I try to be a reasonable guy. I'm like, could that have been deer? Because the light wasn't powerful enough to illuminate everything but the eyes. Well, the next day when I went over there to the tractor, I'm like, the eyes was up here over the fender. Even a deer would have to jump up, put his hooves on the tire to do this. And it's not going to, they're not going to do that, dude. I mean, that's just it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but it makes sense why I felt like something was behind me that night because these two travel in a pair and I know that now. Yep, yep. Uh, almost like one was Did you feel did you feel like you were in danger? I mean, cuz it, it it seems like you know, one would be kind of in front of you and that one behind you almost like leading you to somewhere. Did you feel like that at all? I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, I was scared that night. I was, but it was kind of, uh, like I said, I guess it might have been being dumb. I wanted to know what this was. But yeah, like yeah. you said, after I realized I could have very well ended up in an ambush, and now that I know that there's two of them, and they have got bigger is what I was going to say. They've got bigger from the first time I seen that one. Okay. 
And, uh, but the feeling I get when I know they're here, everything's quiet, and I feel like something is staring a hole through me. And you almost feel like this real bad, scary feeling. And then other nights you can walk out here and there's nothing here. Do that. Yeah, yeah. And then there's some nights you come out of the house and you feel the eyes on you. And I've heard people, I guess, call it dread. I call it you can feel the maybe the fear. Uh, uneasy. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know what it is. So it's I an mean, unsettling it's feeling. Here. Yeah, it's like, you know, like we were talking earlier and i said when i was up in the woods the other day i felt fine at one point but i got to this location and everything just really didn't feel good it was a very unsettling feeling right um and just you know to talk about it it still brings hair up on my arms that night to think about that night like when you uh, re-uploaded Brooke's story yep. a few nights ago. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I guess what I'm saying is it really brought up a lot of memories. And uh, I guess that's the reason I wanted to go ahead and contact you and get it off my chest. Yeah, well, I do appreciate it. Um, that night that you guys were out there recording... Um, because at the end of the interview with Brooke, I had attached that recording that you guys had gotten. Um, yeah. how did that, how did that come to play? Average night. We just, we'd go out at a certain time from about 10 o'clock on out. That's when they start their little hollering and hooping and whatever you want to call it. Okay. By about 2, 3 a.m., it's full-blown Jurassic Park around here. Wow. Yeah. You can hear um, you can hear Bigfoot's hollering from a certain spot. Uh, well, the name of the place is called Foster Falls. Okay. You can hear them hollering there. It's a couple miles from me, but you can hear the Bigfoot's hollering over on Foster Falls all the time. And down here on New River can hear them hollering hmm yeah i and uh i did want to say one thing yes sir uh about victor yep i don't know how people take him as face value or what but i will say this when he said they was calling the dog man in to dispose of him yep through the blue ridge mountain he said it would run all the wildlife and all the bear and stuff down out of the hills. Yeah, yeah. I crap you not, man. We started having major bears around this neighborhood coming down out of the mountains. Now, I'll vouch for that because yeah. uh, you don't really see a lot of them. Well, it was like a light switch was flipped, man. When you aired that, I started seeing, we seen about 15 bar. Man. You know, During that's that that's not the first time I heard that because there's another guy that I had, um, I had on, I don't remember the exact location uh, of Virginia that he was in, but he was a, um, he worked with the police department for a search and rescue um, yep. unit, uh, separate, obviously from the police department. And he had talked exactly about what you just said there. You know, when these things are around, because the animals that, you know, are in the woods up on the, on the Hills, you know, they're up there, but you don't see them when they start coming down. Something's up. Right. Yeah. And he said it would drive the bear out of the mountains and stuff like that. And I, I'd be daggone if I didn't start seeing a major uptick in bear. Wow. And they would not want to go back that direction. They were going the opposite direction of the Blue Ridge. Okay. 
Yeah, a lot of people, the Blue Ridge is a notorious hot spot for, for these things. And I don't like using that word hot spot because I think they travel. You know, they, they like to travel. I don't, I don't think they migrate. I just think they, they're nomadic, you know, um, like Indian tribes back in the day, they would just travel with the food went, you know, and, uh, yeah, it's pretty insane. Now, what I've noticed around here about this time of the year during hunting season and everything, Bigfoot uh, tend to be more vocal, and it you tend to hear them more around this time of the year. Okay. And the dog men seem like they'll go away. But the past couple of years, it has not been that. That's not happened. The Bigfoot's come in and started hollering. Uh, the dog men has not left. Okay. They don't go nowhere. I don't know exactly where they are, but they're around my area. I think they stay on my property sometimes because they're in my woods a lot. Yeah. I think they have a den around here somewhere. I think it's on the back side of the cliff, right? Uh, runs right beside uh, New River Trail, right beside New River. Okay. There's a big rock cliff back here, eat up with caves. And we also have what's called the lead mines around here. It's just a whole mine in town over in like Austinville. They had the lead mines. Yeah, and they definitely like tunnels everywhere around here. There's plenty of places for them to live. Yeah, plenty of food, plenty of water, plenty of uh, hab like, you know, places to, you know, hide out or you know live um have you ever seen them now when we were talking you said you've had a lot of coyote in the area obviously like when your son was in the bath and you you thought oh maybe it was a coyote have you ever seen them travel with the coyote or at night like when you said it was like jurassic park and you could hear them uh, all the vocal um you could definitely hear different sounds in coyote pot uh, sometimes it, it sounds like a coyote, but a little bit bigger, but a little bit, you know, it just beefier. Okay. And then sometimes you'll hear coyotes letting a rip something, a holler out and they'll shut up. Huh. And the dogs in the neighborhood will go off. But, uh, it's not uncommon for something to chime in with the normal coyotes that you can tell just, it just isn't right. Right. Right, you can feel that kind of off-putting. You can hear it. You know something's not. You know, you know what a coyote sounds like, especially if you've lived on your land as long as you've have, and you're used to the coyote, and then you hear something different. You're like, that's not a coyote. That's something else. And you can definitely tell between the Bigfoot and that. Um, yeah, that's crazy, crazy. Um, you had mentioned, um. <clears throat> We were talking about Taswell and stuff, and um, you kind of you you kind of laid um, or gave a lot of what DJ said. Um, you gave it a foundation of uh, credence because um, you had heard one of the encounters he had shared uh, directly from the source before I even shared it. I'm not sure who the fellow's name was, but uh, the encounter here in like Silvatus. Yep. That's right up the road from me. I'd heard about the hunter who had the dog man take the turkey from him, come out, took the turkey, took off. And if I'm not mistaken, they had also had a horse attacked up there. Yep. And I'm pretty sure I know where they're at just past the quarry. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'd heard it from, uh, there's a little, it's a, well, it's a little gym mind. Okay. Near, near our area. And he had told that fella and he had relayed it to me. And then I heard you tell it a couple months later and I was just like, wow. But I know exactly where all it happened. The way he described the area, I know exactly where they're at what road you're talking about it goes up in that mountain and everything yeah 
the main highway goes right in between their property or goes right through the middle of their property. That's incredible. Now you, um, the town you live in and the folk that, you know, like you, when you had said your grandma, uh, warned you about, you know, the booger and, you know, I had mentioned the, what the old timers used to call and they'd say catamount and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Growing up, did you hear a lot of people uh, talk about these things, whether it be the Bigfoot or the Dogman or whatnot? You know, was there a no, lot of... just my grandmother. She would always say those strange things about there's things down in them woods or there's boogers down in them woods, the boogeyman to get you. Just my grandmother. Okay. All right. Um, when... The Bigfoot started hollering real good around here. There was a few people talking down at one of the local stores that used to be down the road here. And there was a little bit of talk, people talking about hearing them over in Foster Falls all the time. Okay. And other than that, no, that's about it. Because you feel about half backwards talking about it. Right, right, yeah. And uh, there's only a few people I actually talk or feel comfortable enough to even tell my story and just be honest with you. Like I said, I like how you do things and I want it to share with you. Well, I appreciate that. I really do. I really do. Uh, my daughter. Good man. So yeah, I had a great time talking with Brooke. She's a great person. Um, before we end, end the upload or interview, I wanted to ask you, we had mentioned, you had mentioned, um, and you don't need to mention names or anything. Obviously, you know how I do things because you listen to the show. But you, you have a buddy who um, doesn't like going out at night. Can you tell us, can you share a little bit about what he, what he, what he saw, what occurred for him not to be? And then that was in your vicinity as well, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, that's just right down the road a click from me. Uh Basically, is the same story. Uh, he grew up knowing there was big feet, and knowing that he had a booger running around there. They'd seen him. They hear him holler all the time. He says he's pretty sure he knows where he holds up at. He just grew accustomed to it, kind of like I did. Yeah. Well, he had a encounter with one of these walking wolves one night. And he mentioned its eyes was red. Now, that's where mine won. Mine had kind of like, um, almost like a babyish blue with a gray tint to them under the moonlight. Okay. Now, he said this one screeches and screams and hollers at him, growls at him, and has red eyes. I'm like, well, buddy, that's a dog man. He said, I don't know what it is, but I don't go outside after night. <laughs> it, it's kind of rattled him. Yeah. And uh, one thing about this area, that other boy touched on. Like I said, I'm pretty sure he's from my same town here. Men around here is built different. It takes a lot to rattle. Yeah. I, I guess it's like your other average places. You got... You got your good guys, you got your bad guys, and then you've got people still living the old way and tough as nails. And when things rattle people like this, you don't play with them. You don't want to go hunting these things. Yeah. Because I can promise you, you're not hunting them. No, most you know, definitely not. Them once. Yeah. Most definitely. But, not. I mean, as far as that, uh, he had an experience with one, and it keeps him hemmed up at nighttime. Once it starts getting dark, he folds up. Me, I've got to keep a watch on my property. I've got to keep a watch on my livestock. I've got no choice. I have to go out at night. Right. Yeah. That's what Brooke said. I don't said. play with them. I'm aware. I don't play with them. That's all I can say. Yep. Have you lost livestock at all? I've lost a few. I've lost cats. I've lost ducks. Uh, I, and I've went extra precaution now. They're under lock and key, all of them. Pretty 
heavy duty built little coops here it would take something to really crack it they could crack them no problem but you know what i'm saying it uh by the time it cracks a coop i should be there yeah 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 it's a little more heavy duty than the uh average coop that... yeah uh, yeah you got chicken houses made out of two by sixes <laughs> Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, four by fours for corner posts. Yeah, you're going to hear something trying to get into that. Yeah, right. And, uh, I mean, this uh, this is just a drop in the bucket. There's stuff that goes on. I've probably forgot more stuff than I can tell you. I've lived with it so long. It, like the growls and uh, thumping on the house and everything i took as a bigfoot behavior before i was aware of these yeah yeah we were talking about the complete misidentification that you had um thinking that was you know dog or thinking of dog man was a bigfoot and you know like i had said coonbo baker said the same thing you know he had to go back years and realize what what he uh saw but that's that's real i like how i like what you said about not going to hunt these things because you you aren't the hunter, you know, and you learned firsthand that one night where you thought you saw that and then you realized there was another one behind you. You know, they're 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 that tactical and that intelligent that they can, you know, move without you knowing and um lead you into a trap. I think these things can see in the dark. Yeah, I think they can see in the dark as good as we see in the day. Yeah, because I've heard them bust through these woods at night, and I, I'd like to see the man that could take off running through my woods at a full sprint for more than five yards without hitting something and knocking himself out. Right, or going through a brush pile. There's just so many things that has happened that me and you could probably talk for two days. Wow. And uh, uh, like tree breaks, I've got I've got a pretty good picture that I'd like to show you one day. Yeah, I'd love to see. I'd love to see some stuff if you don't mind. I'm pretty sure it's a Bigfoot, but I think I have a picture of one. And you don't have to put none of that in or nothing like that, but uh, yeah, that sounds great. That's that's awesome. Um, listen, I had a blast talking with you. Um, I, I really, I'm glad. You know, it was it was great because I, I really wanted to share Brooks' experience again, um, because. I, like I said in the beginning of the video, I thought it would get a lot more views than it did the first time I put it out. Actually, the second time I shared it, it got more views than the first time. Right. Um, and she shared a lot of information with us. And I just, you know, right when you said about your son being in the bath, it was just, you know, a flood of just, wow, I can't, you know, it's just really, really yeah. a great, because he was terrified. You know, like yeah, she was. really said, you know, and, um, that the, the video or not the video, the audio of you and Brooke, when you guys recorded that, that night was just, you can hear you guys talking and it was so intense. Uh, I might, I might include that clip with this upload, but, um, yeah, yeah it was, it was great talking with you. I appreciate talking. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to share share this with us i know you went outside and went up the hill just to get away from your animals because you're worried about them making noise so um but yeah, yeah i will tell you this uh before we get off the phone yes sir that boy is eight years old now okay he can still tell you what he's seen and his story has it changed and the youngin still won't go and use the bathroom by himself. Wow. Wow. And he was about three when it happened. And I literally have to walk with him to the bathroom and stand outside the bathroom and let the boy go, go urinate or whatnot. 
because he's so afraid that he's going to see something in that window again, which I've got blinds and curtains and stuff, you know. Yep. That night they went and drawn. Yeah. I mean, it was wide open. But uh, there's just a few things that I still got to do. And that's one of them. He's eight years old, and I've got to stand outside the bathroom door. Yeah, hopefully that hopefully that that changes. Um, you know, maybe talk with him a little bit, let him know about you know what these things are, and you know that chances are he might not you know he might not ever see one in the bathroom window again. But if he does, that he's you know at least he's inside and he's safe, you know, um, as safe as he can be. But yeah. yeah, that's sad. That poor little guy. I can't. I can't. It's it's really it really bothers me when kids get messed up because of these things. I don't like that. And you know the my two boys are aware of them. They know they are a fact of life. Now I don't hide it from which you know. How do you hide something from someone that's already seen something? Yeah. And you're going to convince them they're not real. That's like me telling you you didn't see that. Yep. Yep. That's what, that's what the government does to us. That's exactly what the government tries to do to us on a daily basis, that these things don't exist. These things don't exist. You wouldn't be, you'd be just in, you know, just what the government is doing to us, you'd be doing to your kids. So you might as well, exactly, exactly right. You can't hide something that they've seen and they know exists and they, you know, I'm sure they've heard you talk about it. Um, yeah, just keep them informed. You know, that's the safest thing that you can do. I'll call their bluff and let them meet one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I've enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Do me a favor. Don't hang up. I'm going to hit the uh, end button on this, but I want to talk to you for a minute before uh, before we end this. Is there anything that you'd like to say to the audience before we do end, though? Just don't play with them. Yeah. Sound advice. Sound advice. Hang on one second and uh, I'll talk to you for a second before you hang up. I know. It's a foot because it, there's not even dogs is like these dogs in this neighborhood goes crazy over anything. Yeah, that's a weird damn owl, whatever it is. The coyotes went off. But other than that. I don't care how cold it is out there. I want to just wait on it. Alright, guys. So there was the 
daughter father interview they shared their experiences that they had going on around their location um i remember reaching out to brooke and it was actually after my daughter had been watching tiktok and she came running into the office and said dad dad this girl's talking about your channel and she's got experiences um i didn't know anything about TikTok and said, how do I get in touch with this girl? And did. And it come to find out her family from like all the way back to her grandmother has had experiences with these things. So I was like, I got to get you on here. Did. And then her dad wanted to come on and share his point of view on some of the experiences that they shared together. Um, it was a really good time doing these interviews and it doesn't happen too often that you get, you know, family members willing to come in and share together. So we're pretty fortunate on that guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is honestly what makes this channel continue to grow and go and what makes it special. And when I say special, I mean people like Brooke and her dad, feeling comfortable to come on and share their experiences without ridicule and judgment. So thank you. That's all on you guys. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there. They're dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.